Hello and welcome back. I didn't realize that last time I said you beautiful people and somebody pointed out that that's the way Brian the Bootmaker starts his videos, but back by popular demand. Come on, up. <laughs> you got it, you got it. <laughs> Chloe's back and um, can I, do you mind if I, maybe we can, here, let's figure out a good way to do this. Why don't you just late, late, okay. Oh, there you go. How about you just lay like a baby? Why don't you just lay like a baby, huh? So, um, Chloe is <laughs> a cross between a golden retriever and a poodle. Okay. All right. And she's, uh, she's only three years old. So she's got a lot of puppy left in her and, uh, we, we absolutely love her. I couldn't ask for more from, you know, a family dog really like she's great with the kids she is the first dog that I've had that, can you not lick yourself on camera? This is, we're gonna try to, this is, this is a family show, okay? So we're gonna try to keep this, you know, PG-13, maybe, maybe a strong PG-13, okay? Um, she, uh, she's the first dog that I've had that I could actually let into the backyard and she won't run away, which is amazing. Like just having her here and, and just to be able, she'll stay local. It's great too, because we live on a road that's kind of busy. So I don't ever wanna, you know, have that tragedy happen. So she's just been spectacular. She also doesn't shed, so we don't have any of that. Those issues, they're like hyper hypoallergenic dogs. And um, coming from having mutts, and I had an English bulldog before her. I gotta say, she's a dream. She really is. I would, I would, I would get another. I would get another one in a minute. First thing I want to do is I want to thank you for signing up for the newsletter that I mentioned last week. Uh, we have over a thousand signups, which is awesome. And it's a good way for me to distill down these whole episodes into something that's useful for you. And it comes right to your inbox once a week. No BS, just the stuff I talked about with the links. So if you want kind of the TLDR, too long, didn't read, uh, that's what'll, what'll do it. So yeah, uh, that sign up link will always be first in the links below. So if you ever want to go and sign up for that, you can. And then beneath that, all the stuff that we talk about. So let's get into the stuff for this week. Now, the first one, UES, UES, I had first heard of because I had gotten one of their flannels on a recommendation. People were like, you got to check out UES, and I'm glad that I did because we got a flannel that is damn near close to quality of an iron heart or a flathead or something like that, and it's like maybe, you know, two-thirds the price. It's still expensive, but their stuff is really, really high quality, and I was very happy with it, so... This here is called the traveling shirt. Now it's $222, which is not cheap for a shirt, but something about this one jumped out at me and I, I can't really tell you exactly what it is. I think it was really honestly the combination of the parts. It just looks like one of those, jack those <laughs> jackets, one of those shirts that you could buy and be happy with for the rest of your life. You know, if you had like two or three of these things, that could be your uniform. And I love the fact they call it travel wear. I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's really intended to embrace that. As a matter of fact, it even has this little thing on the inside of the, I think it's the in your jacket pocket. It has your blood type, which is kind of crazy. Property of, and then the destination, like so you can almost kind of keep a travel log inside of this. I, I, like really, really cool idea. So let's read the description here. The UES traveling shirt embodies enduring quality with its high density sulfur black dyed fabric crafted through relentless dedication, meticulously engineered. It features thoughtful design elements like metal tack buttons and a discreet inner pocket, making it a companion for the modern explorer, blending Japanese craftsmanship with functionality for long lasting comfort and style. Comes in two colors too, so you can get uh, black, which is actually kind of like, I, I like it. It's a little bit of a faded black. And then they have like what looks like a tan uh, as well. So if you want to get, you know, one or the other, or maybe both, uh, you know, for the price, again, comparatively to like an Ironheart, this is a relative bargain. Grant Stone came out with a boot that looks white, but it's not actually white. So I think this is actually quite fascinating because you're gonna have a little bit of the white wax scratched off from when they actually build the boot. So that should make an interesting look just right off the bat. But then as you wear them, the patina is gonna develop like immediately. But this is definitely not the look for everybody. I'm not sure these are something that I would wear. I mean, the white kind of look in the beginning it's like, well, why wouldn't I just fast forward to having the darker colors that I want? And I know that you maybe you'll have like a little bit of flecks of white done. At, you know, they'll be left over at the end of a few months or something. But I don't know. To me, it's not what I want. It's 425 bucks. So for that specialty leather, you're paying a bit of an upcharge. But then again, just because it's not what I want 
doesn't mean that it's not what somebody else wants. And so that's what we cover here. And I want to talk about everything. The White Perry is available in a limited edition leather. This is the uh, CF Stead Rosewood Kudu color. So, I mean, well, Kudu is the type. Rosewood's the color. And it looks dynamite. So if you don't know about Kudu, it's actually, I believe it's in the antelope family. I think it's uh, over in Africa, I believe, where they actually hunt this thing, you know, to kind of control the population. But what you get is a very cool leather that's thick. It's also flexible and has a lot of really interesting natural markings because this is a wild animal after all. But they did a great job with this color, too, because it reminds me a lot of kind of like the old Irish setter red wing boots, that sort of hue. And I, I love this. I think they did a great job. Does anybody else remember back in the day, um, which was really only a couple of years ago, when the, when the White's Perry first came out, the QAQC was all over the place. And it was like you, you saw some that were just way off. I mean, matching pairs that didn't match at all. And uh, it, it does seem like they figured that out now. And I mean, if any company's going to do it, it's, it's the slow and steady whites, right? I mean, they've been around forever and there's a reason for it. So I'm glad that they've done that. And to be fair, they're still offering a fantastic value with this white pair. You're getting all of that white's build quality, albeit in a slightly different makeup, um, you know, for, for what you would pay or close to what you pay for like a Red Wing or something. And uh, it's, it's a better boot overall, in my opinion. Unmarked came out with a boot that is directly aimed at my heart, I think, because I saw this and I was like, ooh, that's a good looking boot. This is the kind of uh, profile that I like. It's called the Archie Full Brown. And, uh, you know, it just has everything that I like all wrapped up into one. So it has a nice, very kind of minimal but sleek looking design. Half sole, really nice, tight, um, you know, uh, that's the, the back part of the heel, right? The, the shelf that's there doesn't stick way off the back. I like when it kind of comes down. It has a continuous curve. To me, that just makes a nice looking boot. And um, I don't know. I mean, I, everything I see uh, about these, I say, uh, you know, I, I think I need a pair of these because they are just gorgeous. So they are laced to toe. It's a cool look. Unexpected, a little bit different. But still, I like how it's also downplayed in this this leather, this color. I, it just I got to tell you, I just think it's beautiful. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting about these is that the leather that they list is just they just call it pull up leather. Right. Which is weird because pull up is sort of a feature of the leather, right? So that would be like, uh, that'd be like saying, um, I, I bought a fast car. Well, what kind of car is it? It's a fast car. Well, yeah, I know, but that's, that's a feature of the car. What is the car, right? So it's funny because they don't mention anything here. Not that I can see about the tannery, whether that pull up leather is veg or chrome tan, right? The hot stuffed leathers, which is basically what a pull up leather is. Uh, come in both veg tan and chrome tan. Uh, is it oil tan? Is it, uh, it, what is it? You know, <laughs> so they don't really tell you, which kind of like sends up a little bit of a red flag for me because oftentimes if you're buying from Wicked and Craig, Horween, Shinky, all these other tanneries, you know, Battle um, you, you're, you're paying a premium, right? So people tend to want you to know where the, this leather is coming from. So this makes me think that possibly this leather is not from a tannery that you would know or respect. And I'm just going out on a limb here. I don't know that that's the case at all. I mean, you, you know, it just, it tells you the, the origin of all the stuff, the lining calf leather it, from Leon, Mexico. Cool. Footbed veg tan leather. Yup. From Leon, Mexico insole veg tan leather from Leon, Mexico. I mean, are they coming from Lafarque? Lafarque is probably the biggest tannery in Leon, right? Mexico. Um, and they, they, they tell you all these other, de other details, but it just says pull up leather, which is just crazy. So I might be way off base here. I, I hope they're as good as they look. And especially for this price, 390 bucks, you know, these are, these are punching above their weight, but I would be skeptical about that leather. I want to know more about it. And before they just list off like a feature of it, I, I want to know the details before I pull the trigger. Bradley mountain did up their version of the G one bomber. They call this the waxed bomber. Take a guess. Yes, it's in wax canvas, which is what they do, right? I mean, that's cool. I mean, I'm not making fun of it. I just, you know, it, all right. Anyway, so, you know, this is the typical G1 layout. Very, very similar. I like that they did um, sometimes these reproductions. Now, this is something that I don't for sure know was a feature on the G1. I mean, I'll tell you, there's stuff that I don't know, and I'll, I'll admit it to you. 
So maybe somebody who's smarter out, out there can tell me. But um, they have the side entry and top entry pockets. Sometimes when you're going to get like an A1, right? They only have the top entry because that's, you know, like, like historically correct. But when it comes to everyday civilian use, I like the side entry to, to put your hand in to use as a hand warmer pocket. I find my Himmel being one of those jackets that as gorgeous as it is, as beautiful as it is, it's, it's kind of like, it's not exactly the most uh, convenient thing to wear because those pockets are flapped with a button. And so you got to open that up. And if you're going to put something in, it's like, you got to kind of do this, right? It's not exactly easy. So they have the side entry, which might not be historically correct, but it's, it's definitely a better design when it comes to like everyday use. So they've done that here. I don't know that that's not original feature. It might be. It uses a 12 ounce waxed canvas for the shell. And then the interior is uh, flannel lined sleeves and pockets. I assume that that's probably cotton flannel. If it was wool, again, they would say so because it would cost more. Um, gusseted shoulders for mobility, love that. Antique brass uh, button snaps, double entry pockets, like I mentioned. Chunky front metal zipper. Again, I, just tell me, is it a YKK? Is it a RiRi? Is it a Universal? Please don't tell me it's an ideal. You know what I mean? Just, just tell me what it is. Um, hidden inside pockets. Great. Love that. Dry clean spot only USA made. Okay. So that's really, really cool. I think it looks good. I think that the price is a little bit high on this one. Personally, this is 400 bucks, right? So as close as you can get almost $398. By the time you're done paying tax and shipping, this is going to be 425 all day long. That's a lot of money for a waxed canvas cotton lined jacket, even though it is cool. I think that that would be, I don't know. They got a knock up. Personally, I would, I would much rather see something like this closer to 300, 350, maybe. It is made in USA, but let's be fair here. We're, we're not talking about the best of the best. Uh, you know, that wax canvas exterior is nice. I would love to see it lined in wool. Even thinner wool is just better all overall, unless you have, you know, allergies or something like that or skin irritation issues. Uh, I got to tell you, for my money, I would actually go with the Cockpit USA version. Now, again, it's not wax canvas. So if you want wax canvas, this is going to be a non-starter for you. But this is the uh, kind of like their interpretation of the original G1. It's made from 100% military spec nylon flight sateen uh, quilted lining with an embroidered silk screened patriotic applique. Mouton shearling collar. There's some money there. There's no doubt about that. And I love that thing. I like that about it, right? Um, let's see what else we have here. Front zipper over wind flap, two front flap pockets, interior snap, closed pocket, knit cuffs and waistband. It's a slim fitting jacket taking up some, uh, pr proudly made in the USA. So we have another made in the USA jacket here, albeit completely different. So this would be the one that you would wear if you wanted an original G1 kind of style, even with that Mouton collar. I just think the thing looks dynamite. But then again, they're two totally, I mean, even though they're both G1s, right? The fact that one is made up like this, the Cockpit USA is more of a reproduction and the Bradley Mountain is more of an interpretation. I guess it's going to boil down to which style you want. And they're basically the same price, which three bucks apart, right? So Cockpit USA is a little bit uh, less expensive, but I mean, damn near close to the same price. So Maine USA, totally different, but I'd say that, um, I don't know, at least with the, the Cockpit USA, you're getting that Mouton, you're getting like a lot of that, that stuff that I think um, people would like, I don't know if, if I had to choose between the two, I would go with the, the cockpit USA, but you have to like that look. So again, it's going to depend on your mileage. Now here's one for you that I am not recommending you get. Okay. People in the chat who are just like, you know, Hey, why are you recommending these things that cost so much? I'm not, I'm not even saying you should get this, but I wanted to bring it up because I think it's good to look at the, the higher tiers to maybe get an idea of what you want to look for in the mid and lower tiers, right? It's like looking at a Ferrari and being like, you know what? I love the color of that Ferrari. I'd like to get my Toyota Corolla painted that color. I don't know, right? <laughs> so this is from Freewheelers. Now, Freewheelers and the real McCoys probably do, and, and which one's better is going to be up to you. They, they probably do the most accurate military reproductions out there. I mean, it, it, they even get fanatical about the type of thread. Stuff that you and I would never know, uh, they're crazy about. And I remember talking to um, Neil from Standard and Strange about this, and he was saying that, yeah, they're just, they are fanatics about it. So if what you want is a basically as good as it can get without getting one directly 
issued to you. And in the case of this, since it's like a 19, was it 51, 1951 jacket, good luck getting one, right? I mean, now, but um, either way, this is from Freewheelers. I'm going to get it right out in the, the open. This is $1,600. Way, way too much then. I mean, I would never spend this ever. But there are people out there with that kind of disposable income who like this kind of stuff. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making it, right? But I thought this was a really interesting design. And uh, so it's from Core Election. And one thing about Core Election, I pointed this out before, everybody on that website is on an angle, all right? Now, I think that what... I don't know if it's... Because it's multiple, multiple models are on this one specific angle. So I don't know that it's not as simple as their tripod isn't set up properly or maybe they're taking a picture where there's a ramp i don't know is it pitched for water i don't know but everybody every model you see here it drives me crazy as somebody who works with photo and video every day seeing these people on this angle constantly drives me nuts please people from core election whatever's going on crop it and just rotate it a little bit just make sure these people are straight up and down it really is it's bizarre it's really weird so this field jacket is inspired by a classic M1951 design originally issued by the U.S. military during the Korean War and subsequently becoming an iconic fashion staple worn by artists, mods, and punks in the decades since. Freewheelers have updated the original design with luxury heavyweight Japanese military black satin and a new improved lining. So even the shell of this thing is something special. It's not just something you get off the roll. So it says here, the shell is Japanese 100% cotton heavyweight military black satin, specially developed by freewheelers. The lining is 100% cotton lightweight ripstop. I mean, like, it's just it's just so meticulous. And I think that some people will really dig this thing. Uh, personally, I would go and, you know, maybe look at the secondhand store for one of these, just to get something that has a little bit of wear to it and doesn't look like... It, let's be frank, that, that, that price is just way too much for me to even, like, fathom. But, uh... It's cool looking nonetheless. Now, the name of this brand, I think, is Cordobas. Cordobas. C-O-R-D-O-B-E-S. That's what I'm going to say until somebody corrects me, okay? Um, now, I think that what we have here is possibly the lowest priced, cool looking engineer boot that I've seen. And a lot of people have asked me, like, I love engineer boots, but I can't pay $700. And I, I mean, usually I'm just like, well, I mean, I hate to say it, but it seems like that's kind of the going price. There's a lot of leather and engineer boots and they're just that expensive. But these here are 399 bucks. Not only that, but they look really decent. So what we have here is it looks like it's a bit of a, it's a little a la carte, right? So you get to choose your last. They have a couple of different lasts too. Um, you choose your size, your width, your sole, the leather color. Uh, the leather finish, whether you want smooth out, rough out, suede, or nubuck. Uh, you get to choose your stitching, your hardware, and even the construction. So they have stitch down construction. For a $30 upcharge, there's Blake Rapid construction. And then if you want hand welted, it's an additional $90. So now we're talking about $500 boots, right? I mean, you know, they're already $400. You add on $90 for a hand welt. Well, you know, now we're talking $500. But still, $500 for a hand welted for a, for a hand welted engineer boot, <laughs> that's pretty damn good. Um, you get to choose your vamp. You get to choose your edge finish. You get to choose your your toe. Whether you want a elastic or no structure or whatever, and it's like it's still even if you add on everything, all the most expensive stuff, you're still getting in under six hundred bucks for a really decent looking engineer boot. I gotta tell you, I am so intrigued um, that I actually ordered a pair. So I want to know, like, okay, these things look great. Looks like the price is, like, to die for. What's the deal, you know? And um, I, I want to find out for myself. Now, the pictures are pretty pretty amateur. Uh, it's hard to tell a lot of the details just from these photos. And, you know, it looks like they have some natural edge finishing on there or maybe just none at all, right? It, it's like, these could be really good, but photog the, the photography is lacking, or they might be not so good, and that amateur photography is covering up some of the sins. I would love to see how the stitching is on these. If these are anything like those Bordeaux boots that I just reviewed, holy moly, is this a smoking deal. And I would say jump on it before they realize what they're doing and then up the price, because there's no way that you're going to be able to get these things for 400 bucks for that much longer uh, if they're that good. But we're going to find out. So I have a pair coming to me. Um, I think it's going to take a little while. Just I forgot what the lead time was on these. 
Now, the other thing I forgot to mention here is that they are made in Mexico, and it's not even Leon, it's someplace else. I mean, I was reading about it before, and it's in a small uh, village here. Just bear with me for one second. So it says here, we are proud to say that all our pieces are made in a small workshop in San Mateo Atenco. Aten Atenco? I don't know. I'm sorry. I probably totally screwing that up. A town in the outskirts of Mexico City. Uh, it's one of the best shoemaking places in Mexico, and the artisans in the workshop have more than three generations of experience. So, you know, again, maybe what we found here is a diamond in the rough, and I'm really hoping that that's the case because we need more affordable engineer boots for people out there because 700 bucks as a floor is just way too high. So we'll see. We will see. I have a pair of these coming. That's how intrigued I was, and I hope that they live up to the hype. So I forgot to uh, look up how you pronounce Dehen, 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 Dehen. You know what I'm talking about. Well, they came out with a rain jacket. Uh, they call this their heavy-duty raincoat. It's 575 bucks, but, you know, it does look like a pretty cool option. And I wanted to include it here because I, I love the color. I think that the design is very interesting. It reminds me of, um, it almost looks like a, it looks to me almost looks like took an anorak and then they just made it a full zip or a full button, I guess I should say. Is it button and zippered? How is it? How are they doing this thing here? Okay, so it is. There's a zipper, and then there's a storm flap that's a snaps. Those are snaps that go over it, yes. Yeah, it's, okay, you know, wax cotton is is water resistant. But if I'm going to buy a rain jacket, I'm going to go with Arcteryx, Patagonia, North Face, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of companies that make great rain jackets, and I'm going to go with one of those. If I absolutely need to remain dry, my first choice is not going to be waxed canvas. Usually that's kind of like an incidental thing, right? Oh. It might rain today. Good thing I have a little bit of wax on my, my canvas. Now, yes, I know that traditionally people have waxed their garments to make them waterproof for, for a long time. But we are so much further along in our technology that, you know, again, if I'm going out and I, it's going to rain, I'm going to get a dedicated rain jacket. All that to say, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be skipping out on this one. This is not my kind of thing. I mean, I know a lot of people have wanted us to do the workhorse with a hood. But. To me, it's just like a hood is all right if you're if you're going to use it all the time. But I almost I almost never use my hood. And uh, for this to be a rain jacket, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. It looks great. I'm sure it's made beautifully. But for me, it, it misses the mark, especially for that price. For that price, I can get a very, very nice rain jacket from any of those companies I just mentioned. And I bet it will actually be lighter, keep me uh, drier and and ultimately be more useful. So I've got a weird pick for you this week. This is an interesting one, and I, as I read more about it, I was actually kind of like, that's pretty cool. So the brand is called One, spelled out, O-N-E, 432. This is called the Shacket CR, and, and basically what they do is they took one of their patterns and they stitched together some of the scraps that they had laying around to make the bottom section, which looks really cool. Our best-selling wave panel shirt jacket made by quilting upcycled scraps from our production floor and paired with a non-electric Hand loom woven recycled cotton upper, fully reversible and can be worn inside out as a solid color. So it's like, it's just kind of neat. I like the fact that they did that and they took something that um, was normally going to be wasteful and then stitched it together to make this very interesting kind of 90s-esque pattern. I just, I don't know. I thought it was really, really neat what they did here. I mean, now it's it's different. And even when you reverse it, it looks even crazier, I think, kind of, because they, they use orange and blue and it's like, whoa. But, uh... I like it. I like it. It's just something different, something unique. And I can guarantee that if you're using scraps, that they're not all the same, right? I'm sure it's all just a little bit different, but got to give them credit for trying something new here. And uh, it's weird, but this is a weird one that in the right color, I would probably wear. I really would. I mean, it's a little, it's a little adventurous for me, but they did something interesting and unique. And I'm, I, I applaud them for that. So I want to kind of tell you something that's been very interesting. You know, I have my main channel, which I, we just crossed over 150,000 subscribers, which is, you know, a number that I never even imagined would happen. And then spinning off this channel as a secondary thing and really not caring all that much about the numbers. Um, I really was more interested in the interaction, right? Like the core group followed me over and now it's this small group of people. And it's cool because I see the same people commenting all the time. So I'm recognizing your names and like, you know, like Scott Owl, we talk, you know, there's a whole bunch of people down there who it's, you know, we feel like we have a back and forth. I feel like we're we're like we're, we're like we're pen pals or distant friends or whatever. And um, 
So while the views on these videos aren't huge, I, I, I love the interaction. And it's funny because I have this thing called vidIQ, which is like a, uh, a plugin, right? It kind of shows you a little bit more detailed analytics about your own videos so you know what's working, what's not. And uh, I was looking at this channel and it was it was showing me, it said, you know, the the interaction is like off the charts. Like the views are, you know, okay or whatever, but the interaction is like, holy moly. That's exactly what I wanted. I love it because the I don't really have to moderate the comments it's small enough and it's a this tight knit community of, you know, how about we have like a few thousand people and that's it. And like, I'm just chat, I'm chatting with you guys. And so it's like me and you. And it's if I was going to do a meetup or some sort of a an event or, or something like that, this is the group that I would want to bring with me. You know what I mean? This is like, like I said, the, the core people who came over from the other channel and like other people might subscribe to that channel and they might subscribe to this one. They might not to one or the other. But I feel like you guys are are this like really cool core group that um, I would want to hang out with genuinely. So it's it's really cool. I, I love it. I just love the fact that you guys are um, keeping the comment section going and responding to one another and helping other people out. And uh, it's a great group. You guys are just amazing. I can't say it. Uh, I can't say it more. I'm going to keep trying, though. I am going to keep I'm going to keep trying to, like, make sure that I weave that into every video because I'm very, very thankful. So I hope you had a great Easter. If you don't celebrate Easter, I hope that you had a great weekend, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Thank you so much.